Well, more than all, here's the power section, the power board for a Baum Mueller drive type BUM60-30-60 dash three zero slash six zero dash three one dash b dash zero 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 dash a dash zero one one dash b well, that's a long port number <laughs> now what happened to this drive the switch mode power supply shorted out the switching MOSFET uh, part number IRF PG30 manufactured by International Rectifier. That MOSFET shorted out and when it did, it took a lot of items in that switch mode power supply circuit. It wiped them out. There were two diodes down here. I'll show you uh, pictures at the end of the video uh, of the damage to the switch mode power supply. But it took uh, two uh, surface mount diodes shorted them completely out, smoked the board. Uh, there's three 3.3 ohm surface mount resistors that were in the feedback circuit to the UC3844 switch mode power supply. I see they, those three resistors had holes in the middle of them. Uh, the UC3844, it wasn't shorted. I couldn't believe it, but I replaced it anyways. Now, we're going to test this circuit without the switching MOSFET in the circuit. Um, I also went ahead and lifted up the switching transformer and tested it on the uh, same core uh, and soldered it back down to the board. But there's no way that that switching transformer is going to be switched right now because I don't have the switching MOSFET installed. Uh, what the switching MOSFET does, you'll have an output, a frequency output, a square wave of, of 0 to 15 volts thereabouts that drives into the gate of the switching MOSFET. Now, the switching transformer's primary winding is connected to the high voltage, the DC bus, and the other side, the other side of that winding is connected to the drain of the switching MOSFET, so that when the switching MOSFET is turned off and on, the switching transformer is switched, and the primary voltage is induced on the secondaries. It's very genius how they have worked this out. Well, how's it going to work without the switching MOSFET? I have this variac right now it's set to zero volts and we're going to gradually sneak up on the voltage applied to X5. And X5 is rectified by this bridge, uh, bridge rectifier. And we have some feed forward resistors right here. And they are filtered with this capacitor right here. We'll get close, you'll, you'll see it all. And we're going to increase the voltage until pin 7 reaches the under voltage lockout voltage of that IC. And for this IC, it's uh, typically 16 volts uh, DC. But what happens because we don't have any voltage or current feedback, it's not going to stay up and run. But it will allow us to view uh, uh, voltages, for instance, the RC network, the sawtooth on the RC network. We'll be able to see that power up. And then it will shut down because there's no feedback. Uh, we'll be able to view the VREF of 5 volts. It'll come up and then fall off and come up and fall off because there's, again, no feedback to this IC. And then most importantly, we'll get to look at the output frequency that drives into the gate of the switching MOSFET. So, uh, a couple of things 
we need to discuss, and that is safety. You're going to have some high voltages here. Don't get across them. <laughs> Enough about that. But there's your oscilloscope. You especially do not want to damage this oscilloscope. So over here, I have, this is the line cord for the oscilloscope. I have an isolation plug. There's earth ground from that oscilloscope back to earth ground of the power plant of the building. Uh, I isolate that earth ground so that when I'm probing around, I don't accidentally get, say for instance, on the input side of the switcher, and I go over here and look at logic while I'm grounded to the input side, and there I have created a high voltage between here and there, and I might damage the scope. There's other reasons for isolating your scope from the earth ground. Another way to do it is with um, a one-to-one -one transformer. I've seen people do that too. You'll have a primary side and a secondary side of, uh, of the line, and there's no step up or step down of that transformer. You've got 110 coming in on the primary and 110 going out on the secondary to power up the scope, but there's isolation between here and there, so that scope does not get earth grounded. Okay, so I'm going to place this point here, you know, inside the via of the source for that switching MOSFET. That'll be our bus ground. Let's turn the scope on. Make sure our variax turned all the way down. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the camera in front of the oscilloscope. And I will tell you which pins we're looking at. Be kind of hard to see both at the same time as I'm probing on this uh, UC3844B. But I'll let you know which pins we're looking at. And uh, you'll get to see what happens on the scope. Now, if everything looks good, we're going to solder a new IRFP G30 MOSFET onto the power board, and then we'll sneak up on it again. Uh, and I'll let it burn in for maybe a day to make sure that it don't flame out again. Uh, here in the shop, it's a lot easier to blow things up. It's less embarrassing <laughs> uh, to blow things up here in the shop than it is to have it go back to the customer and flame out again. Uh, happens sometimes. Well, let's get close to that scope. Enough of me hammering. <laughs> you know me, I like to talk. <laughs> First, I'm going to look at pin 7, VN to the UC3844 as we gradually increase the variac into Connector X5. All right. Now you'll see that it gets to 16 volts and then it shuts down. It starts to shut down. Let's go look at pins 1, 2, and 3. That's comp on pin 1, voltage feedback on pin 2, and current sense on pin 3. There's pin one, we're at zero volts. Pin two is at zero volts. And pin three is at zero volts. We have no feedback because we don't have that uh, switching MOSFET installed yet. Uh, at this point, X5 is at 41 point 3 volts AC. That's a far cry from 220 volts AC, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we're going to look at pin 4. You can see there, that's the sawtooth. Now, it was present and then it drops out. 
Pin 4 is the RTCT pin. Now when this switch mode power supply IC is running, that will be constant. It will always be present. Let's go over to pin 6. That's the output that drives into the gate of the switching MOSFET. There it is. Now it's gone. There it is. You can see it starts up and then it stops. And it'll continuously do that. That's a peak of about 15 volts right there. A pin 5, we didn't look at that. That is ground. That's connected to your DC bus ground. And we saw pin 7 already. Let's look at it again. See how that gets up to 16 volts? It drops down to about 10. Let's go look at pin 8. Pin 8 is V ref. That should be 5 volts. There it is. Oh, it goes away. There it is. Now again, once the switch mode power supply IC is up and running, that will be a constant 5 volts out there on pin 8. It won't start up and shut down. Okay, let's disconnect. I'll solder in that switching MOSFET and we'll sneak up on it again. We're not quite at the point where we can throw the full 220 volts AC single phase at connector X5. We have a few more experiments to do. I especially want to see if, with that switching MOSFET installed, do we smoke the board again? <laughs> we might if I miss something. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Fire up the soldering iron. Move all this out of the way and and we'll uh, we'll put that switchy MOSFET in there. Let's test the shorted MOSFET first. Here's gate to drain, there's a short, here's drain to source, there's a short, let's check the good one, here's gate to drain, gate to source, drain to source, we've turned it on, Let's turn it off. And we have a diode drop when we turn it off. Did you see how I did that? Here, let me do it again. Red lead on gate. Black lead on drain. And then black lead on source. Red lead on drain. We've turned it on. To turn it off, Black lead on gate, and we have a diode drop. When you have your black lead on drain and red lead on source, let's try that again. Red lead on gate. Can you all see that? My hands in the way. Red lead on source black lead on drain. Now, black lead on gate and black lead on drain, red lead on source. <laughs> you can turn some MOSFETs on. Some don't turn on like that, but most do. Now, let's take that good MOSFET and install into the switch mode power supply circuit. Here's the heat sink assembly. Slip that up into the heat sink assembly. Set that down in the drive. Push that 
heat sink assembly down into the drive. Whoops, get in there. There we go. Let's flip this over. up our very act to X5. Oops, oh, get on there. Don't short out. <laughs> meter set our meter to AC Hopefully we don't see smoke. And when we get up to about 40 some odd volts, we'll pull out the scope and see if it's firing. AC. I don't see no smoke. <laughs> That's a good sign. But is it running? brought the Variac up to about 69, 70 volts AC, about 70 volts AC, there's 69.8 volts AC on the X5 connector, and now the switcher has started up and remains running. It's not shutting down anymore. 
Let's take a look at some of the pins now. Here's pin one. We're at five volts per division on the scope. Here's pin one. That looks to be about seven volts right there. Oh, it slipped off. It's about seven volts right there. Okay. Here is pin two. That looks real close to zero volts to me. That was the voltage feedback, pin one being the comp. Here's pin three, current sense. You can see a little tickle right there. Sitting at ground with just a little bit of action going positive. All right. Here's CT, there's your sawtooth. And look, it's not shutting down. That's your RTCT pin, pin four. All right, let's go to pin eight, which is five volts. This is our V ref. There's a good five volts right there. Here's pin seven. And that looks to be just a hair over 15 volts DC right there. And it's not shutting down. You saw before where it drooped down to 10 volts. Now I gotta be real careful here. This is the output pin that's driving into the gate of that MOSFET. I don't wanna fat probe this. If I short this out, we'll pop that MOSFET again. There's the square wave, 15 volt peak driving into the gate of that MOSFET. Now there's 22 ohm resistor between here and the MOSFET. That's the gate resistor of 22 ohms. It looks like we're uh, looks like we're running. Now I'll sneak up, uh, not today, but tomorrow. I'll sneak up on that. Uh, uh, voltage with the variac, you know, I'll eventually get it up to 220. Don't want to jump right into it. <laughs> These things kind of uh, worry me every now and then. You can have, have it working one day and fail the next. All right, all. Tomorrow's another day. We'll try it again. Let's head to the hooch. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.